it is one thing for universities to do this when you assume that most of the students have the equipment to do it. Uh, but when you talk about, uh, you know, younger children, schools around the world, are we really ready for these students to go online only? Perhaps they're already online or they will be going on in a, line in a matter of days. A simple answer is we're, we're not, uh, but I think there's a lot of actors who are trying to put things together so that uh, we can keep students learning, essentially. Uh, the reality is I know there's some school districts, obviously internationally, places like Japan and South Korea have already canceled schools nationwide. And it's in the U.S. we've already seen school closures and it's probably going to accelerate over the next couple of weeks. And the reality is if they start in the next few weeks, they're likely to last through the summer because we're not going to see the peak cases for, for probably several weeks now. And you know, one logistic change that could happen, although there's a lot of complexities there, is they could shift summer vacation up a few months uh, and, and just resume class in the back half of, of summer, which, which could simplify a lot of things. But assuming that's not going to happen or you need some type of a hybrid, uh, yeah, a lot of districts are thinking about how to virtualize. And there's a lot of complexity there if they can even operationally do it. But even if they can, they're thinking about equity issues of do all students have access. And so, you know, our goal as a, as a not-for-profit uh, with a mission-free world-class education, we're thinking about how do we put up all, our, all of our materials together. They're all free. They're all accessible. Uh, as much practice as students need to get, as much feedback. There's even ways for uh, teachers and parents and district officials to keep track of what students are doing. How do we uh, make it very easy to use if uh, students are home for an extended period of time, possibly for months, uh, and they can keep learning? So how do you structure a day of learning at home? What can parents do? What can teachers do? Yeah, my general sense is to try to keep it as simple as possible. If I have young kids, let's say elementary school aged, I would say if you could do even two, three hours of focused learning a day, that would actually be great. I would, I would really focus on the basics, maybe an hour of reading, an hour of math. That reading can really just be focused on the student being able to read and that you as a parent being able to spend time talking about what they're reading with them. If they're even younger, you can read with them for half an hour or an hour a day. Uh, for very young kids, we have something called Khan Academy Kids, which is an app that has actually over 100 titles inside of it and has other things in uh, math and science and social emotional learning. It's all free. It's all non-commercial. Uh, if you're going to elementary, middle school aged, we could, we're actually working on a reading list that we can provide for parents. And then the math side, that's where we feel like we have uh, families covered uh, from as early as pre-K all the way through uh, high school and college uh, to statistics, calculus, algebra, whatever they need. And if students are able to put in, I would say, two 30-minute sessions a day of focused practice on Khan Academy, getting as much practice, as much feedback, the system will progress them along, whatever they need to learn master concepts, they'll be able to get their bases covered. Above and beyond that, if you can do an hour of, of writing a day, some type of journaling, even thinking about what's going on in the world, that's interesting. And then for high school students, we, we have even more. Uh, we can support them for things like AP classes, their high school science classes like biology, chemistry, physics. Uh, we have continent economics and in American history and, and government and civics as well. Okay. Do you have any lessons or anecdotes from across Asia where, as you mentioned, some f students have been home for weeks, where things are working and where things might not be working? Yeah, it's coming in uh, bits and pieces. Uh, it actually first came on our radar last week when a teacher in South Korea that had to virtualize is using Khan Academy heavily with his students. And so that's when the first hit us. And wow, we have to start putting a game plan because it's really our duty to us as a, as a, a, a NGO. So if there are widespread school closures here in the United States for an indefinite amount of time, how well off do you think our children will be? It's obviously not great. It's not an ideal situation, but as much as possible, I think we can try to make it a, ga a glass half full uh, type type of situation, where if they're able to use uh, these the types of online materials I just talked about, and potentially continue through the summer, they're, they're you know part of the glass half full is whatever patterns if we can get people learning when the school closures happen, that could actually set a new pattern for what could happen over the summer where you've traditionally had what's called the, the slumber, the, the summer slide where kids not only aren't learning but they forget. Uh, so that is an opportunity of sorts. I hope that districts are able to provide some support, especially for kids who don't have uh, resources at home or internet, maybe keep certain computer labs open. And it wouldn't be for all of the kids, so the density of kids coming on site will be lower, so there's less of a, a chance of, of spreading uh, the virus.